Hi guys, so in this particular video, we'll be thinking about some of the uh, molecules or compounds that are formed uh, through glycosidic bonding in, in carbohydrates, uh, alpha glucose specifically. They are compounds that people often hear about, but we didn't in the past probably don't really think about alpha or beta, the difference between alpha and beta. And actually it's really important because that sort of affects the structure and the structure affects function. There are two specific examples uh, that you need to know, uh, one in plant and one in animals. So we'll start off with the one in plants. So plants, as you would know from GCSE, uh, they uh, do photosynthesis uh, to make glucose and then glucose then join up to make starch. And that is the first compound we'll think about. Starch is actually a uh, molecule made up of two different parts. Uh, one is called amylose and the other one is called amylopectin. Now, uh, these two join up together to make uh, starch. Amylose is a straight chain molecule and is, uh, as we said in the previous video, if it's a straight chain, it means it's all made up of uh, one four glycosidic bonds. Whereas amylopectin is a slight difference. It's a mixture of one four and a one six glycosidic bonds and hence making a branched structure. Is one one six bond every 25 alpha glucose molecules that they make a branch like that and that is basically uh, starch so what you get is the amylose pectin so it's kind of like wound up in a straight helix and then they've got amylopectin that sits in between so it makes it very compact uh, the other one in the animal one is the is glycogen or fungi as well and glycogen is basically the animal version of the amylopectin it's also branched and it's Hence, it's made up of 1,4 and 1,6. Uh, but in this, the difference between amylopectin and glycogen is that there are more 1,6 bonds existing in glycogen. It's more frequent. Um, so it's more branched than amylopectin. Like that. So the key idea is that both of these uh, compounds here, they have a branched structure. And these are both ideal for en energy storage. If it's branched, it means that it's compact, and that means that it is stable. So it doesn't react very easily with water or any other sort of chemicals. Hence why it's good as a storage uh, compound in these organisms. So it's not gonna lose any sort of glucose easily, meaning you can retain more of that stuff to do respiration to release energy. So when they do want to have that glucose, then they have the glucose released from the edge ends of it, to do respiration in mitochondria.